Back to the Theranos news now. Is this the end? Maybe not. We mentioned Sonny Balwani got 13 years in prison for swindling investors and patients. This afternoon, a judge handed down Balwani's sentence during a hearing that lasted about four hours. Balwani had been found guilty of 12 counts of investor and patient fraud. Here's his attorney. We're, uh, we respectfully disagree with the result in the case. We are disappointed in the outcome, and we plan to appeal and keep on fighting for our client, Mr. Balwani. They will keep on fighting. Joining us now is our own Scott Budman, who has been following this case for years, and our legal analyst, Dean Johnson. Gentlemen, nice to see both of you this evening. Scott, you were in that courtroom a few weeks ago for the Elizabeth Holmes sentencing. She broke down in tears. What was Balwani's reaction today? Well, you know, Raj, she broke down in tears when she had a chance to speak to the victims, to the judge, to the jury, to her family, and apologize for everything that had gone on. That's something that she gets a chance to do. That chance was given today to Sonny Balwani, and he rejected it, so we did not hear from him. He didn't show any emotion, and even after the 13-year sentence was announced, he <laughs> stared straight ahead for quite some time before turning around and being consoled by his family, but a much much quieter Balwani than we saw in the Elizabeth Holmes case. And Scott, refresh my memory. Did Sonny Balwani at all address the court during uh, this trial at any point? He did not. And that was something that a lot of people talked about. Elizabeth Holmes humanized herself and her goals and what she wanted to do. She also took down Sonny Balwani while she was on the stand. Balwani never spoke. We still to this day have not heard from him. Dean Johnson, let's bring you in here. Sonny Balwani is the number two in charge, but he gets 13 years in prison. Elizabeth Holmes is the big boss. She gets 11 years. What, why the difference? Well, the one thing that's important to understand is in federal sentencing, you pick a sentencing range. Um, the, the judge picked the same sentencing range for both defendants, but he gave Elizabeth Holmes the lower end of the range. Sonny Bellamini got about the, the, the middle range, and you can understand why. Uh, as Scott pointed out, um, Bellamini had the opportunity to look victims in the eye and say, I'm sorry. Uh, Holmes took that opportunity and apparently did so very credibly, but Bellani never did that. Um, I also think that, that what played in the judge's mind is that Belwani is the adult in the room, or he was during this, this whole affair. Um, he, he was 37 when he met Elizabeth Holmes at the time. She was an 18-year-old high school student. He had extensive business experience. He should have known better, and he should have shut this thing down before it became the disaster that it was. Dean, let me jump in here. Uh, you've been part of a lot of high-profile trials. Would you have advised Sonny Belwani, if he was your client, to, to, to address the court at any point? Probably not. You know, I've never had a chance to sit down and, and speak to Sonny, but um, I think the, the judgment here was that he really could not help himself. And, and part of that uh, is on the defense attorneys, because in their moving papers, they essentially said that, that Belwani was a great guy who had huge faith in Theranos and who did nothing wrong. If Belwani had stood up in court and said, hey, I'm sorry, uh, as a judge, uh, Judge Davila might have said, well, sorry for what? Your attorneys are saying you didn't do anything wrong. So he may have undermined what, what his own attorneys were, were saying in their papers. Very interesting. Gentlemen, let's take a quick peek now of how we got here and why this company matters so much. 2003, we're rewinding the clock here. Elizabeth Holmes was a 19-year-old Stanford dropout when she started Theranos, based in Palo Alto. She was inspired by her own fear of needles and had a mission of creating a cheap and more efficient way to get blood tests. In 2009, Sunny Balwani joined the company. In 2013, Theranos announced its partnership with Walgreens to buy those Theranos machines, and Holmes was named one of the richest women in the U.S. Until 2015 and 2016, Theranos and Holmes were the subject of a Wall Street Journal investigation. From there, it went downhill and fast. 2016, federal regulators got involved, saying that the Theranos lab didn't comply with federal standards and shut it down. That same year, Balwani stepped down. Holmes' net worth was reevaluated to zero. In 2018, Holmes and Balwani were indicted on criminal fraud charges, which leads us now 
to 2022 heading into 2023. A lot of people invested in this case, that popular streaming series, a best-selling book. Uh, Scott, what's next? Um, what do you think for, for, from all these court monitors? What happens now? Well, and I would turn this over to Dean Johnson to explain, but we know there are going to be appeals. Both sides have said they disagree, not only with the verdict, but we've moved past that to the sentencing. They say they will even appeal that. And at this point, it's less interesting for Sonny Balwani. He has a date to appear in March. No reason why he can't do that. On the other hand, for Elizabeth Holmes, she is expecting a child. And what happens right after that is going to be, I think, a lot of legal maneuvering to try to get her to be able to spend time with that child, I imagine. Dean, is it that easy? I want to appeal. I'm just going to do it and it's going to be granted? It's not quite that easy. You have to convince the judge that you're not filing an appeal for mere delay. You have to you have to show that uh, in the legal terms uh, that there's a substantial issue for appeal. Uh, Holmes's attorneys have already filed that paper to convince the judge of that fact, and they listed a, a whole laundry list of issues that they want to raise on appeal, which they say are substantial. I'm sure Belwani will file a similar paper raising probably all of those issues as well as specific issues uh, that apply only to his case. So, um, yeah, I think there will be a stay pending appeal. There'll be many, many months before either Holmes or Belwani sees the inside of a jail cell. Final question to you, Dean Johnson. If their appeals are not successful, meaning Elizabeth Holmes and Sonny Belwani do have to go to prison, what type of prison are we talking about here? I don't think it's going to be San Quentin, correct? No, we, we're not talking about supermax. We're talking about minimum security prisons. Uh, Belwani could very well go to Lompoc, which some people call a summer camp or a country club. Another possibility would be Sheridan, which is a, a very you know, relatively pleasant uh, facility for a prison. I mean, you, you never want to be in prison. Um, but if you want to be in prison, these are the places that are the best to be in, and, and the most desirable. Now, one certainly a way to look at it. Dean Johnson, Scott Budman, thank you for your time and your insight uh, throughout the many years of this saga at Theranos. Appreciate it. As Scott has followed these trials every step of the way, you can see all of his previous reporting here. We put it all together on our homepage. Just go to NBCBayArea.com and search Theranos.